In Greek mythology, Achilles or Achilles, K I L E E Z, Greek, Achilles Achilles A K L L S was a Greek hero of the Trojan War and the central character and greatest warrior of Homer's Iliad. His mother was the immortal Nereid Thetis, and his father, the mortal Peleus, was the king of the Myrmidons. Achilles' most notable feat during the Trojan War was the slaying of the Trojan hero Hector outside the gates of Troy. Although the death of Achilles is not presented in the Iliad, other sources concur that he was killed near the end of the Trojan War by Paris, who shot him in the heel with an arrow. Later legends beginning with a poem by Statius in the 1st century AD state that Achilles was invulnerable in all of his body except for his heel because, when his mother Thetis dipped him in the river Styx as an infant, she held him by one of his heels. Alluding to these legends, the term, Achilles' heel, has come to mean a point of weakness, especially in someone or something with an otherwise strong constitution. Etymology Linear B tablets attest to the personal name Achilles in the forms Akiri U and Akiri We, the latter being the dative of the former. The name grew more popular, even becoming common soon after the 7th century BC and was also turned into the female form Achilleia, Achilleia attested in Attica in the 4th century BC IG2 squared 1617 and, in the form Achilleia, on a steel in Halicarnassus as the name of a female gladiator fighting an Amazon. Achilles' name can be analyzed as a combination of achos, achos distress, pain, sorrow, grief, and laus, laus people, soldiers, nation", resulting in a proto-form asterisk aki lao, os, he who has the people distressed, or he whose people have distress. The grief or distress of the people is a theme raised numerous times in the Iliad and frequently by Achilles himself. Achilles' role as the hero of grief or distress forms an ironic juxtaposition with the conventional view of him as the hero of Cleos Cleos, glory, usually in war. Furthermore, Laos has been construed by Gregory Nagy, following Leonard Palmer, to mean a corps of soldiers, a muster. With this derivation, the name obtains a double meaning in the poem, when the hero is functioning rightly, his men bring distress to the enemy, but when wrongly, his men get the grief of war. The poem is in part about the misdirection of anger on the part of leadership. Another etymology relates the name to a Proto-Indo-European compound asterisk h -ek pods, sharp foot which first gave an Illyrian asterisk ak, pedios, evolving through time into asterisk akhpedios and then asterisk akedios. The shift from dd to ll is then ascribed to the passing of the name into Greek via a pre-Greek source. The first root part asterisk h ak, sharp, pointed, also gave Greek ak, ak, point, silence, healing, akme, akme, point, edge, zenith, and oxys, oxys. Sharp, pointed, keen, quick, clever. Whereas achos stems from the root asterisk heg, to be upset, afraid. The whole expression would be comparable to the Latin acupedius, swift of foot. Compare also the Latin word family of aces, sharp edge or point, battle line, battle, engagement, acus, needle, pin, bodkin, and acuo. To make pointed, sharpen, wet, to exercise, to arouse. Whence acute. Some topical epitheta of Achilles in the Iliad point to this swift footedness, namely Padarx Dios Achilles, Padarx Dios Achilles, swift footed divine Achilles, or, even more frequently, Podas Ochis Achilles, Podas Ochis Achilles, quick footed Achilles. Some researchers deem the name a loan word, possibly from a pre Greek language. Achilles' descent from the Nereid Thetis and a similarity of his name with those of river deities such as Acheron and Achilles have led to speculations about him being an old water divinity see below worship. Robert S. P. Beeks has suggested a pre-Greek origin of the name, based among other things on the coexistence of LL and Lambda in epic language, which may account for a palatalized phoneme per light year, in the original language. Birth and early years Achilles was the son of the Nereid Thetis and of Peleus, the king of the Myrmidons. Zeus and Poseidon had been rivals for the hand of Thetis until Prometheus, the forethinker, warned Zeus of a prophecy originally uttered by Themis, goddess of divine law, that Thetis would bear a son greater than his father. 
For this reason, the two gods withdrew their pursuit, and had her wed Peleus. There is a tale which offers an alternative version of these events. In the Argonautica, 4.760, Zeus' sister and wife Hera alludes to Thetis' chaste resistance to the advances of Zeus, pointing out that Thetis was so loyal to Hera's marriage bond that she coolly rejected the father of gods. Thetis, although a daughter of the sea god Nerus, was also brought up by Hera, further explaining her resistance to the advances of Zeus. Zeus was furious and decreed that she would never marry an immortal. According to the Achilleid, written by Statius in the 1st century AD, and to non-surviving previous sources, when Achilles was born Thetis tried to make him immortal by dipping him in the river Styx. However, he was left vulnerable at the part of the body by which she held him, his left heel see Achilles' heel, Achilles' tendon. It is not clear if this version of events was known earlier. In another version of this story, Thetis anointed the boy in ambrosia and put him on top of a fire in order to burn away the mortal parts of his body. She was interrupted by Peleus and abandoned both father and son in a rage, however, none of the sources before Statius make any reference to this general invulnerability. To the contrary, in the Iliad Homer mentions Achilles being wounded. In Book 21, the Paeonian hero Astropaeus, son of Pelagon, challenged Achilles by the river Scamander. He cast two spears at once, one grazed Achilles' elbow, drawing a spurt of blood. Also, in the fragmentary poems of the epic cycle in which one can find description of the hero's death i.e. the Cypria, the Little Iliad by Leshes of Pyrrha, the Aethiopes and Eliu Persis by Arctinus of Miletus, there is no trace of any reference to his general invulnerability or his famous weakness at the heel, in the later vase paintings presenting the death of Achilles, the arrow or in many cases, arrows hit his body. Peleus entrusted Achilles to Chiron the centaur, on Mount Pelion, to be reared. Thetis foretold that her son's fate was either to gain glory and die young, or to live a long but uneventful life in obscurity. Achilles chose the former, and decided to take part in the Trojan War. According to Homer, Achilles grew up in Thea together with his companion Patroclus. According to Phocius, the sixth book of the New History by Ptolemy Hephaestion reported that Thetis burned in a secret place the children she had by Peleus, but when she had Achilles, Peleus noticed, tore him from the flames with only a burnt foot, and confided him to the centaur Chiron. Later Chiron exhumed the body of the Damisus, who was the fastest of all the giants, removed the ankle, and incorporated it into Achilles' burnt foot. Hidden on Skyros Some post-Homeric sources claim that in order to keep Achilles safe from the war, Thetis or, in some versions, Peleus hid the young man at the court of Lycomedes, king of Skyros. There, Achilles is disguised as a girl and lives among Lycomedes' daughters, perhaps under the name Pyrrha, the red-haired girl. With Lycomedes' daughter Didamia, whom in the account of Statius he rapes, Achilles their father's a son, Neoptolemus also called Pyrrhus, after his father's possible alias. According to this story, Odysseus learns from the prophet Calchas that the Achaeans would be unable to capture Troy without Achilles' aid. Odysseus goes to Skyros in the guise of a peddler selling women's clothes and jewelry and places a shield and spear among his goods. When Achilles instantly takes up the spear, Odysseus sees through his disguise and convinces him to join the Greek campaign. In another version of the story, Odysseus arranges for a trumpet alarm to be sounded while he was with Lycomedes' women. While the women flee in panic, Achilles prepares to defend the court, thus giving his identity away. In the Trojan War According to the Iliad, Achilles arrived at Troy with fifty ships, each carrying fifty Myrmidons. He appointed five leaders each leader commanding five hundred Myrmidons, Menestheus, Eudorus, Pisander, Phoenix and Alcimdon. Telephus <inaudible> 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 When the Greeks left for the Trojan War, they accidentally stopped in Mysia, ruled by King Telephus. In the resulting battle, Achilles gave Telephus a wound that would not heal. Telephus consulted an oracle, who stated that, He that wounded shall heal. Guided by the oracle, he arrived at Argos, where Achilles healed him in order that he might become their guide for the voyage to Troy. According to other reports in Euripides' lost play about Telephus, he went to Aulus pretending to be a beggar and asked Achilles to heal his wound. Achilles refused, claiming to have no medical knowledge. 
Alternatively, Telephus held Orestes for ransom, the ransom being Achilles' aid in healing the wound. Odysseus reasoned that the spear had inflicted the wound, therefore, the spear must be able to heal it. Pieces of the spear were scraped off onto the wound and Telephus was healed. Troilus According to the Cypria the part of the epic cycle that tells the events of the Trojan War before Achilles' wrath, when the Achaeans desired to return home, they were restrained by Achilles, who afterwards attacked the cattle of Aeneas, sacked neighboring cities like Podossus and Lyrnesus, where the Greeks captured the queen Briseis and killed Tanais, a son of Apollo, as well as Priam's son Troilus in the sanctuary of Apollo Thimbraeus. However, the romance between Troilus and Chrysus described in Geoffrey Chaucer's Troilus and Chryside and in William Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida is a medieval invention. In Dare's Phrygius account of the destruction of Troy, the Latin summary through which the story of Achilles was transmitted to medieval Europe, as well as in older accounts, Troilus was a young Trojan prince, the youngest of King Priam's and Hecuba's five legitimate sons, or according other sources, another son of Apollo. Despite his youth, he was one of the main Trojan War leaders, a horse fighter, or chariot fighter, according to Homer. Prophecies linked Troilus' fate to that of Troy and so he was ambushed in an attempt to capture him. Yet Achilles, struck by the beauty of both Troilus and his sister Polyxena, and overcome with lust, directed his sexual attentions on the youth, who, refusing to yield, instead found himself decapitated upon an altar omphalos of Apollo Thimbraeus. Later versions of the story suggested Troilus was accidentally killed by Achilles in an over-ardent lover's embrace. In this version of the myth, Achilles' death therefore came in retribution for this sacrilege. Ancient writers treated Troilus as the epitome of a dead child mourned by his parents. Had Troilus lived to adulthood, the first Vatican mythographer claimed, Troy would have been invincible. In the Iliad. Homer's Iliad is the most famous narrative of Achilles' deeds in the Trojan War. Achilles' wrath, menus Achilleos menus Achilleos is the central theme of the poem. The first two lines of the Iliad read, The Homeric epic only covers a few weeks of the decade-long war, and does not narrate Achilles' death. It begins with Achilles' withdrawal from battle after being dishonored by Agamemnon, the commander of the Achaean forces. Agamemnon has taken a woman named Chrysus as his slave. Her father Chrysus, a priest of Apollo, begs Agamemnon to return her to him. Agamemnon refuses, and Apollo sends a plague amongst the Greeks. The prophet Calchas correctly determines the source of the troubles but will not speak unless Achilles vows to protect him. Achilles does so, and Calchas declares that Chrysus must be returned to her father. Agamemnon consents, but then commands that Achilles' battle prize Briseis, the daughter of Briseis, be brought to him to replace Chrysus. Angry at the dishonor of having his plunder and glory taken away and, as he says later, because he loves Briseis, with the urging of his mother Thetis, Achilles refuses to fight or lead his troops alongside the other Greek forces. At the same time, burning with rage over Agamemnon's theft, Achilles prays to Thetis to convince Zeus to help the Trojans gain ground in the war, so that he may regain his honor. As the battle turns against the Greeks, thanks to the influence of Zeus, Nestor declares that the Trojans are winning because Agamemnon has angered Achilles, and urges the king to appease the warrior. Agamemnon agrees and sends Odysseus and two other chieftains, Ajax and Phoenix, to Achilles with the offer of the return of Briseis and other gifts. Achilles rejects all Agamemnon offers him and simply urges the Greeks to sail home as he was planning to do. The Trojans, led by Hector, subsequently push the Greek army back toward the beaches and assault the Greek ships. With the Greek forces on the verge of absolute destruction, Patroclus leads the Myrmidons into battle, wearing Achilles' armor, though Achilles remains at his camp. Patroclus succeeds in pushing the Trojans back from the beaches, but is killed by Hector before he can lead a proper assault on the city of Troy. After receiving the news of the death of Patroclus from Antilochus, the son of Nestor, Achilles grieves over his beloved companion's death. His mother Thetis comes to comfort the distraught Achilles. She persuades Hephaestus to make new armor for him, in place of the armor that Patroclus had been wearing, which was taken by Hector. The new armor includes the shield of Achilles, described in great detail in the poem. Enraged over the death of Patroclus, Achilles ends his refusal to fight and takes the field, killing many men in his rage but always seeking out Hector. 
Achilles even engages in battle with the river god's commander, who has become angry that Achilles is choking his waters with all the men he has killed. The god tries to drown Achilles but is stopped by Hera and Hephaestus. Zeus himself takes note of Achilles' rage and sends the gods to restrain him so that he will not go on to sack Troy itself before the time allotted for its destruction, seeming to show that the unhindered rage of Achilles can defy fate itself. Finally, Achilles finds his prey. Achilles chases Hector around the wall of Troy three times before Athena, in the form of Hector's favorite and dearest brother, Diphobus, persuades Hector to stop running and fight Achilles face to face. After Hector realizes the trick, he knows the battle is inevitable. Wanting to go down fighting, he charges at Achilles with his only weapon, his sword, but misses. Accepting his fate, Hector begs Achilles, not to spare his life, but to treat his body with respect after killing him. Achilles tells Hector it is hopeless to expect that of him, declaring that, My rage, my fury would drive me now to hack your flesh away and eat you raw, such agonies you have caused me. Achilles then kills Hector and drags his corpse by its heels behind his chariot. After having a dream where Patroclus begs Achilles to hold his funeral, Achilles hosts a series of funeral games in his honor, with the assistance of the god Hermes. Hector's father, Priam, goes to Achilles' tent to plead with Achilles for the return of Hector's body so that he can be buried. Achilles relents and promises a truce for the duration of the funeral. The poem ends with a description of Hector's funeral, with the doom of Troy and Achilles himself still to come. Later epic accounts, fighting Penthesilea and Memnon The Ethiopies 7th century BC and a work named Postamerica, composed by Quintus of Smyrna in the 4th century AD, relate further events from the Trojan War. When Penthesilea, queen of the Amazons and daughter of Ares, arrives in Troy, Priam hopes that she will defeat Achilles. After his temporary truce with Priam, Achilles fights and kills the warrior queen, only to grieve over her death later. At first, he was so distracted by her beauty, he did not fight as intensely as usual. Once he realized that his distraction was endangering his life, he refocused and killed her. Following the death of Patroclus, Nestor's son Antilochus becomes Achilles' closest companion. When Memnon, son of the dawn goddess Eos and king of Ethiopia, slays Antilochus, Achilles once more obtains revenge on the battlefield, killing Memnon. Consequently, Eos will not let the sun rise, until Zeus persuades her. The fight between Achilles and Memnon over Antilochus echoes that of Achilles and Hector over Patroclus, except that Memnon unlike Hector, was also the son of a goddess. Many Homeric scholars argued that episode inspired many details in the Iliad's description of the death of Patroclus and Achilles' reaction to it. The episode then formed the basis of the cyclic epic Ethiopes, which was composed after the Iliad, possibly in the 7th century BC. The Ethiopes is now lost, except for scattered fragments quoted by later authors. Topic: <laughs> Achilles and Patroclus. The exact nature of Achilles' relationship with Patroclus has been a subject of dispute in both the classical period and modern times. In the Iliad, it appears to be the model of a deep and loyal friendship. Homer does not suggest that Achilles and his close friend Patroclus were lovers. Despite there being no direct evidence in the text of the Iliad that Achilles and Patroclus were lovers, this theory was expressed by some later authors. Commentators from classical antiquity to the present have often interpreted the relationship through the lens of their own cultures. In 5th century BC Athens, the intense bond was often viewed in light of the Greek custom of paederasteia. In Plato's Symposium, the participants in a dialogue about love assume that Achilles and Patroclus were a couple. Phaedrus argues that Achilles was the younger and more beautiful one so he was the beloved and Patroclus was the lover. But ancient Greek had no words to distinguish heterosexual and homosexual, and it was assumed that a man could both desire handsome young men and have sex with women. <laughs> death The death of Achilles, as predicted by Hector with his dying breath, was brought about by Paris with an arrow to the heel according to Statius. In some versions, the god Apollo guided Paris's arrow. Some retellings also state that Achilles was scaling the gates of Troy and was hit with a poisoned arrow. 
All of these versions deny Paris any sort of valor, owing to the common conception that Paris was a coward and not the man his brother Hector was, and Achilles remained undefeated on the battlefield. His bones were mingled with those of Patroclus, and funeral games were held. He was represented in the Ethiopies as living after his death in the island of Luque at the mouth of the river Danube. Another version of Achilles' death is that he fell deeply in love with one of the Trojan princesses, Polyxena. Achilles asks Priam for Polyxena's hand in marriage. Priam is willing because it would mean the end of the war and an alliance with the world's greatest warrior. But while Priam is overseeing the private marriage of Polyxena and Achilles, Paris, who would have to give up Helen if Achilles married his sister, hides in the bushes and shoots Achilles with a divine arrow, killing him. In the Odyssey, Agamemnon informs Achilles of his pompous burial and the erection of his mound at the Hellespont while they are receiving the dead suitors in Hades. He claims they built a massive burial mound on the beach of Ilion that could be seen by anyone approaching from the ocean. Achilles was cremated and his ashes buried in the same urn as those of Patroclus. Paris was later killed by Philoctetes using the enormous bow of Heracles. In Book 11 of Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus sails to the underworld and converses with the Shades. One of these is Achilles, who when greeted as, "'Blessed in life, blessed in death,' responds that he would rather be a slave to the worst of masters than be king of all the dead. But Achilles then asks Odysseus of his son's exploits in the Trojan War, and when Odysseus tells of Neoptolemus' heroic actions, Achilles is filled with satisfaction. This leaves the reader with an ambiguous understanding of how Achilles felt about the heroic life. According to some accounts, he had married Medea in life, so that after both their deaths they were united in the Elysian fields of Hades, as Hera promised Thetis in Apollonius Argonautica 3rd century BC. <laughs> Fate of Achilles' armor Achilles' armor was the object of a feud between Odysseus and Telamonian Ajax, Ajax the Greater. They competed for it by giving speeches on why they were the bravest after Achilles to their Trojan prisoners, who after considering both men, decided Odysseus was more deserving of the armor. Furious, Ajax cursed Odysseus, which earned him the ire of Athena. Athena temporarily made Ajax so mad with grief and anguish that he began killing sheep, thinking them his comrades. After a while, when Athena lifted his madness and Ajax realized that he had actually been killing sheep, Ajax was left so ashamed that he committed suicide. Odysseus eventually gave the armor to Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles. A relic claimed to be Achilles' bronze-headed spear was for centuries preserved in the temple of Athena on the Acropolis of Phasilus, Lycia, a port on the Pamphylian Gulf. The city was visited in 333 BC by Alexander the Great, who envisioned himself as the new Achilles and carried the Iliad with him, but his court biographers do not mention the spear. However, it was shown in the time of Pausanias in the 2nd century AD. <laughs> Achilles, Ajax and a game of Petea Numerous paintings on pottery have suggested a tale not mentioned in the literary traditions. At some point in the war, Achilles and Ajax were playing a board game Petea. They were absorbed in the game and oblivious to the surrounding battle. The Trojans attacked and reached the heroes, who were saved only by an intervention of Athena. <laughs> Worship and heroic cult The tomb of Achilles, extant throughout antiquity in Troad, was venerated by Thessalians, but also by Persian expeditionary forces, as well as by Alexander the Great and the Roman Emperor Caracalla. Achilles' cult was also to be found at other places, e.g., on the island of Astypalaia in the Sparides, in Sparta which had a sanctuary, in Elis and in Achilles' homeland Thessaly, as well as in the Magna Graecia cities of Tarentum, Locri and Croton, accounting for an almost panhellenic cult to the hero. The spread and intensity of the hero's veneration among the Greeks that had settled on the northern coast of the Pontus Eusinus, today's Black Sea, appears to have been remarkable. An archaic cult is attested for the Milesian colony of Albia as well as for an island in the middle of the Black Sea, today identified with Snake Island Ukrainian Zemini, near Kilia, Ukraine. 
Early dedicatory inscriptions from the Greek colonies on the Black Sea graffiti and inscribed clay discs, these possibly being votive offerings, from Albia, the area of Barazan Island and the Tauric Chersonese attest the existence of a heroic cult of Achilles from the 6th century BC onwards. The cult was still thriving in the 3rd century AD, when dedicatory stelae from Albia refer to an Achilles Pontarches, Pontarches roughly, Lord of the Sea, or of the Pontus Eusinus who was invoked as a protector of the city of Albia, venerated on par with Olympian gods such as the local Apollo prostates, Hermes Agorius, or Poseidon, Pliny the Elder 23 AD in his natural history mentions a «port of the Achae» and an «island of Achilles», famous for the tomb of that «man» Portus Achaeorum, Insula Achilles, Tumulo Ius Viri Clara, situated somewhat nearby Albia and the Dnieper Bug estuary. Furthermore, at 125 Roman miles from this island, he places a peninsula, which stretches forth in the shape of a sword, obliquely, called Dromos Achilleos, Achilleos Dromos Achilleos Dromos, the race course of Achilles, and considered the place of the hero's exercise or of games instituted by him. This last feature of Pliny's account is considered to be the iconic spit, called today Tendra or Cosa Tendra and Cosa Jarilgach, situated between the mouth of the Dnieper and Carcinet Bay, but which is hardly 125 Roman miles c. 185 km away from the Dnieper Bug estuary, as Pliny states. To the race course, he gives a length of 80 miles, c. 120 km, whereas the spit measures c. 70 km today. In the following chapter of his book, Pliny refers to the same island as Achillea and introduces two further names for it, Lus or Macaron from Greek, Nessos Macaron Island of the Blessed. The present day measures, he gives at this point, seem to account for an identification of Achillea or Lus with today's Snake Island. Pliny's contemporary Pomponius Mela c. 43 AD tells that Achilles was buried on an island named Achillea, situated between the Boristhenes and the Ister, adding to the geographical confusion. Ruins of a square temple, measuring 30 meters to a side, possibly that dedicated to Achilles, were discovered by Captain Kritzikli in 1823 on Snake Island. A second exploration in 1840 showed that the construction of a lighthouse had destroyed all traces of this temple. A 5th century BC black glazed Lekathos inscription, found on the island in 1840, reads, Glaucos, son of Poseidon, dedicated me to Achilles, lord of Luke. Quote, in another inscription from the 5th or 4th century BC, a statue is dedicated to Achilles, lord of Luke, by a citizen of Albia, while in a further dedication, the city of Albia confirms its continuous maintenance of the island's cult, again suggesting its quality as a place of a super regional hero veneration. The heroic cult dedicated to Achilles on Luce seems to go back to an account from the lost epic Ethiopes, according to which, after his untimely death, Thetis had snatched her. Her son from the funeral pyre and removed him to a mythical Luke Nessos, Luke Nessos White Island. Quote closing parenthesis dot. Already in the 5th century BC, Pindar had mentioned a cult of Achilles on a Bright Island. Fina Nassos, Fina Nassos of the Black Sea, while in another of his works, Pindar would retell the story of the immortalized Achilles living on a geographically indefinite island of the blessed together with other heroes such as his father Peleus and Cadmus. Well known is the connection of these mythological fortunate isles, Macaron Nessoi, Macaron Nessoi or the Homeric Elysium with the stream Oceanus which according to Greek mythology surrounds the inhabited world, which should have accounted for the identification of the northern strands of the Euxene with it. Guy Hedrin has found further evidence for this connection of Achilles with the northern margin of the inhabited world in a poem by Alcius, speaking of Achilles Lord of Scythia and the opposition of North and South, as evoked by Achilles' fight against the Ethiopian prince Memnon, who in his turn would be removed to his homeland by his mother Eos after his death. The Periplus of the Euxene C. C. 130 AD gives the following details. It is said that the goddess Thetis raised this island from the sea, for her son Achilles, who dwells there. Here is his temple and his statue, an archaic work. This island is not inhabited, and goats graze on it, not many, which the people who happen to arrive here with their ships, sacrifice to Achilles. In this temple are also deposited a great many holy gifts, craters, rings and precious stones, offered to Achilles in gratitude. 
One can still read inscriptions in Greek and Latin, in which Achilles is praised and celebrated. Some of these are worded in Patroclus' honor, because those who wish to be favored by Achilles, honor Patroclus at the same time. There are also in this island countless numbers of sea birds, which look after Achilles' temple. Every morning they fly out to sea, wet their wings with water, and return quickly to the temple and sprinkle it. And after they finish the sprinkling, they clean the hearth of the temple with their wings. Other people say still more, that some of the men who reach this island, come here intentionally. They bring animals in their ships, destined to be sacrificed. Some of these animals they slaughter, others they set free on the island, in Achilles' honor. But there are others, who are forced to come to this island by sea storms. As they have no sacrificial animals, but wish to get them from the god of the island himself, they consult Achilles' oracle. They ask permission to slaughter the victims chosen from among the animals that graze freely on the island, and to deposit in exchange the price which they consider fair. But in case the oracle denies them permission, because there is an oracle here, they add something to the price offered, and if the oracle refuses again, they add something more, until at last, the oracle agrees that the price is sufficient. And then the victim doesn't run away anymore, but waits willingly to be caught. So, there is a great quantity of silver there, consecrated to the hero, as price for the sacrificial victims. To some of the people who come to this island, Achilles appears in dreams, to others he would appear even during their navigation, if they were not too far away, and would instruct them as to which part of the island they would better anchor their ships. The Greek geographer Dionysus Periagetes, who lived probably during the first century AD, wrote that the island was called Luce, because the wild animals which live there are white. It is said that there, in Luce Island, reside the souls of Achilles and other heroes, and that they wander through the uninhabited valleys of this island. This is how Jove rewarded the men who had distinguished themselves through their virtues, because through virtue they had acquired everlasting honor. Similarly, others relate the island's name to its white cliffs, snakes, or birds dwelling there. Pausanias has been told that the island is covered with forests and full of animals, some wild, some tame. In this island there is also Achilles' temple and his statue. Luce had also a reputation as a place of healing. Pausanias reports that the Delphic Pythia sent a lord of Croton to be cured of a chest wound. Ammianus Marcellinus attributes the healing to waters aquae on the island. A number of important commercial port cities of the Greek waters were dedicated to Achilles. Herodotus, Pliny the Elder and Strabo reported on the existence of a town Achilleon, Achilleon built by settlers from Mytilene in the 6th century BC, close to the hero's presumed burial mound in the Trode. Later attestations point to an Achilleon in Messenia according to Stephanus Byzantinus and an Achilleos, Achilleos in Laconia. Nicolae Densicianu recognized a connection to Achilles in the names of Aquileia and of the northern arm of the Danube Delta, called Chilia, presumably from an older Achille, though his conclusion, that Luce had sovereign rights over the Black Sea, evokes modern rather than archaic sea law. The kings of Epirus claimed to be descended from Achilles through his son, Neoptolemus. Alexander the Great, son of the Epirote princess Olympias, could therefore also claim this descent, and in many ways strove to be like his great ancestor. He is said to have visited the tomb of Achilles at Achilleion while passing Troy. In AD 216 the Roman emperor Caracalla, while on his way to war against Parthia, emulated Alexander by holding games around Achilles' tumulus. Reception during antiquity in Greek tragedy The Greek tragedian Aeschylus wrote a trilogy of plays about Achilles, given the title Achilles by modern scholars. The tragedies relate the deeds of Achilles during the Trojan War, including his defeat of Hector and eventual death when an arrow shot by Paris and guided by Apollo punctures his heel. Extant fragments of the Achilles and other Aeschylean fragments have been assembled to produce a workable modern play. The first part of the Achilles trilogy, The Myrmidons, focused on the relationship between Achilles and Chorus, who represent the Achaean army and try to convince Achilles to give up his quarrel with Agamemnon, only a few lines survive today. 
In Plato's Symposium, Phaedrus points out that Aeschylus portrayed Achilles as the lover and Patroclus as the beloved. Phaedrus argues that this is incorrect because Achilles, being the younger and more beautiful of the two, was the beloved, who loved his lover so much that he chose to die to revenge him. The tragedian Sophocles also wrote The Lovers of Achilles, a play with Achilles as the main character. Only a few fragments survive. Towards the end of the 5th century BC, a more negative view of Achilles emerges in Greek drama. Euripides refers to Achilles in a bitter or ironic tone in Hecuba, Electra, and Iphigenia in Aulis. Topic: In Greek philosophy. The philosopher Zeno of Elea centered one of his paradoxes on an imaginary footrace between swift-footed Achilles in a tortoise, by which he attempted to show that Achilles could not catch up to a tortoise with a head start, and therefore that motion and change were impossible. As a student of the monist Parmenides and a member of the Eleatic school, Zeno believed time and motion to be illusions. <laughs> Achilles in Roman and medieval literature The Romans, who traditionally traced their lineage to Troy, took a highly negative view of Achilles. Virgil refers to Achilles as a savage and a merciless butcher of men, while Horace portrays Achilles ruthlessly slaying women and children. Other writers, such as Catullus, Propertius, and Ovid, represent a second strand of disparagement, with an emphasis on Achilles' erotic career. This strand continues in Latin accounts of the Trojan War by writers such as Dictes Cretensis and Dares Phrygius and in Benoit de saint Maur's Roman de Troy and Guido della Collins' Historia Destructionis Troia, which remained the most widely read and retold versions of the matter of Troy until the 17th century. Achilles was described by the Byzantine chronicler Leo the Deacon, not as Hellene, but as Scythian, while according to the Byzantine author John Malalas, his army was made up of a tribe previously known as Myrmidons and later as Bulgars. In modern literature and arts Literature <inaudible> 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 Achilles appears in Dante's Inferno composed 1308 He is seen in Hell's second circle of lust. Achilles is portrayed as a former hero who has become lazy and devoted to the love of Patroclus, in William Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida 1602. The French dramatist Thomas Corneille wrote a tragedy La Mort d'Achel Achilles is the subject of the poem Achilles 1799, a fragment by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Achilles is mentioned in Tennyson's poem, Ulysses, published in 1842. We shall touch the happy isles and meet there the great Achilles whom we knew. In 1899, the Polish playwright, painter and poet Stanisław Wyspiański published a national drama, based on Polish history, named Achilles. In 1921, Edward Shanks published The Island of Youth and Other Poems, concerned among others with Achilles. The 1983 novel Cassandra by Krista Wolfe also treats the death of Achilles. Achilles is killed by a poisoned Kentor arrow shot by Cassandra in Marion Zimmer Bradley's novel The Firebrand 1987. Achilles is one of various narrators in Colleen McCulloch's novel The Song of Troy 1998. The Death of Achilles, Smert Ahalesa 1998 is an historical detective novel by Russian writer Boris Akunin that alludes to various figures and motifs from the Iliad. The character Achilles in Ender's Shadow 1999, by Orson Scott Card, shares his namesake's cunning mind and ruthless attitude. Achilles is one of the main characters in Dan Simmons's novels Ilium 2003 and Olympos 2005. Achilles is a major supporting character in David Gemmell's Troy series of books 2005 Achilles is the main character in David Maloff's novel Ransom 2009. The ghost of Achilles appears in Rick Reardon's The Last Olympian 2009. He warns Percy Jackson about the curse of Achilles and its side effects. Achilles is a main character in Terence Hawkins' 2009 novel The Rage of Achilles. Achilles is a major character in Madeline Miller's debut novel, The Song of Achilles 2011, which won the 2012 Orange Prize for Fiction. 
The novel explores the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles from boyhood to the fateful events of the Iliad. Achilles appears in the light novel series Fate, Apocrypha as the writer of Red. Visual arts Achilles with the Daughters of Lycomedes is a subject treated in paintings by Anthony van Dyck before 1618, Museo del Prado, Madrid and Nicolas Poussin c. 1652, Museum of Fine Arts, Boston among others. Peter Paul Rubens has authored a series of works on the life of Achilles, comprising the titles, Thetis dipping the infant Achilles into the river Styx, Achilles educated by the centaur Chiron, Achilles recognized among the daughters of Lycomedes, the wrath of Achilles, the death of Hector, Thetis receiving the arms of Achilles from Vulcanus, the death of Achilles Museum Boijmans van Boeningen, Rotterdam, and Briseis restored to Achilles Detroit Institute of Arts, all c. 1630-1635, Peter Van Lint, Achilles discovered among the daughters of Lycomedes, 1645, at the Israel Museum, Jerusalem. Dying Achilles is a sculpture created by Christoph Verrier, c. 1683, Victoria and Albert Museum, London. The Rage of Achilles is a fresco by Giovanni Battista Tipolo, 1757, Villa Valmarana i Nani, Vicenza. Eugene Delacroix painted a version of the education of Achilles for the ceiling of the Paris Palais Bourbon 1833-1847, one of the seats of the French Parliament. Arthur Kahn created a statue group Achilles and Penthesilea 1895, Vienna. Achilles 1908 is a lithography by Max Slevot. Topic: <laughs> Music Achilles has been frequently the subject of operas, ballets and related genres. Operas titled Didamia were composed by Francesco Cavalli and George Frederick Handel 1739. et Polixene Paris 1687 is an opera begun by Jean-Baptiste Lully and finished by Pascal Calas. Achille e Didamia Naples 1698 is an opera, composed by Alessandro Scarlatti. Achilles London 1733 is a ballad opera, written by John Gay, parodied by Thomas Arne as Achilles in Petticoats in 1773. Achille in Syro is a libretto by Metastasio, composed by Domenico Saro for the inauguration of the Teatro di San Carlo Naples, 4 November 1737. An even earlier composition is from Antonio Caldera Vienna 1736. Later operas on the same libretto were composed by Leonardo Leo, Turin 1739, Niccolo Giamelli, Vienna 1749 and Rome 1772, Giuseppe Sardi, Copenhagen 1759 and Florence 1779, Johann Adolf Haas, Naples 1759, Giovanni Paisiello, Street Petersburg 1772, Giuseppe Gazzaniga, Palermo 1781 and many others. It has also been set to music as Il Trionfo della Gloria. Achille Vienna 1801 is an opera by Ferdinando Parr on a libretto by Giovanni de Gamera. Achille a Cyros Paris 1804 is a ballet by Pierre Gardel, composed by Luigi Cherubini. Achilles, Oder das Zerstort Troja. Achilles, or Troy destroyed. Bonn 1885 is an oratorio by the German composer Max Bruch. Achilles auf Skiros Stuttgart 1926 is a ballet by the Austrian-British composer and musicologist Egan Welles. Achilles' Wrath is a concert piece by Sean O'Loughlin. Achilles' Last Stand a track on the 1976 Led Zeppelin album Presence. Achilles' Agony and Ecstasy in Eight Parts is the first song on the 1992 Manowar album The Triumph of Steel. Achilles Come Down as a song on the 2017 Gang of Yous album Go Farther in Lightness. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Film and Television. In films Achilles has been portrayed in the following films and television series. The 1924 film Helena by Carlo Aldini. The 1954 film Ulysses by Piero Lully. The 1956 film Helen of Troy by Stanley Baker. The 1961 film The Trojan Horse by Arturo Dominici. 
The 1962 film The Fury of Achilles by Gordon Mitchell. The 1997 television miniseries The Odyssey by Richard Truitt. The 2003 television miniseries Helen of Troy by Joe Montana. The 2004 film Troy by Brad Pitt. The 2018 TV series Troy, Fall of a City by David Giassi. Topic. Architecture In 1890, Elizabeth of Bavaria, Empress of Austria, had a summer palace built in Corfu. The building is named the Achilleion, after Achilles. Its paintings and statuary depict scenes from the Trojan War, with particular focus on Achilles. Topic. Namesakes The name of Achilles has been used for at least nine Royal Navy warships since 1744 both as HMS Achilles and with the French spelling HMS Achillais. A 60-gun ship of that name served at the Battle of Belle Isle in 1761 while a 74-gun ship served at the Battle of Trafalgar. Other battle honours include Walcheren 1809. An armoured cruiser of that name served in the Royal Navy during the First World War. HMNZS Achilles was a Leander-class cruiser which served with the Royal New Zealand Navy in World War II. It became famous for its part in the Battle of the River Plate, alongside HMS Ajax and HMS Exeter. In addition to earning the battle honour River Plate, HMNZS Achilles also served at Guadalcanal 1942-43 and Okinawa in 1945. After returning to the Royal Navy, the ship was sold to the Indian Navy in 1948 but when she was scrapped parts of the ship were saved and preserved in New Zealand. A species of lizard, Anolis achilles, which has widened heel plates, is named for Achilles. <laughs> Gallery <laughs>